Well, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. It is Tuesday evening, and I am so thankful to have you joining me live tonight in our studio as we continue with Empowerment Tuesday night. Man, this is this has just been a phenomenal season for uh, for my life, and I pray that it has been yours. We had an awesome move on Sunday morning. What a man! Just a prophetic move of the Father, man. And I pray that your lives are blessed and that you're moving in a direction that brings God some glory. And so tonight, I want to help us tonight to continue to move forward. I want to give you a couple of announcements, if you will. Um, this Thursday night, which is tomorrow, uh, Thursday night, I'm, I'm going to come be hanging out with our worship team. So this is just a reminder for uh, Eric Wright and Tawana and all the worship team that I'm going to be spending a little time with you guys this Thursday night at your rehearsal. I look forward to being there with you. Amen. So I'm praying about what God has for us to spend time together. So please make it your business. Uh, worship team band members to be there. I can't wait to hang out with you guys. Here is the second thing. I want you to be a part of Faith Field Friday. Faith Field Friday is going to be on this Friday at noon, every Friday at noon, moving forward, God willing. And it is Faith Field Friday. There's an opportunity for me just to come and minister to you from 12 to about 12, 15. Man, join me for lunch. Invite friends. Invite people to be a part. It's going to be a great time. Faith Field Friday. Now, here's the other thing that I want you guys to remember. This Friday night is our not ministry. It's the marriage ministry. If you're dating, seriously dating, married, engaged, this is an opportunity for you to come and learn more about how to have a healthy, wholesome, spiritual Christian relationship. If you remember on last Faith Feel Friday, I said, don't tell me that this time it'll be different if you're still doing the same thing. If you've not been out to the not ministry, don't feel like you want to be a part. Don't tell me you want your marriage to be better or even improve if you're doing the same thing. We want to come out. We want to be a part. I believe God's going to bless our marriage ministry leadership, the Robinsons and the Fairies. They're going to bless us and give us good, wholesome information that will keep us on the right path to developing strong, healthy relationships. And that's what we want in this season. I want to encourage you again and remind you um, that this coming Sunday, we will not stream again. There is yet another word from the Lord that God has just been burning in my spirit. And I need you to be here in the house of the Lord to receive this word coming up. And I also want you to remember that next Tuesday, I know this has been a while. Next Tuesday, empowerment session will be in person. It will be in person. Watch me only. I am not streaming on Tuesday nights. This, this is a season where God is discipling his church. And I want to be able to focus my attention on those who are coming out to the house of the Lord and are ready to receive the word of the Lord. So just remember, again, this coming Sunday, we're not streaming. Tuesday, March the 1st, which is the relaunch of the in-person service, we will not stream either. But I will be on Faith Field Friday and then the following Sunday, we will be back streaming Again, I need you to help me with something. I saw something on Facebook and I saw um, Elder Ben, Elder Ben, um, I saw that your wife is singing somewhere, I believe it's in May. What is that date? She's singing somewhere. You remember I told you guys that we want to start supporting one another. And when I see stuff that you guys are doing, I want to encourage our congregation to be a part of that. So um, if you haven't seen Vicki Ferry's page or nowhere, I, I know she's singing at a church somewhere, some big event. I want us to be able to support that event. And when you have something going on, remember the book of Ephesians said we help each part grow. We want our brothers and sisters to feel like we love them and we support them and we want to be a part of what they're doing. And so uh, Vicki or Ben, if you guys could just put those dates on the line on, on the stream for us. We'll, we'll, we want to be a part. I want to be a part. I plan to try to come and be a part and celebrate what you're doing. There it is. Oh, it's in Orlando, Florida. Hi, Shonday, day, 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 day. <laughs> That's why reading is fundamental. <laughs> I thought it was, I saw, I saw New Life, Ricky, and I thought it was um, the one on, uh, um, out on, on the south side. But I plan to still try to be a part of Vicky. I, I support you. Guys, listen, we got a play coming up. I want you guys to be a part. If you can be a part of that, jump in and be a part. All right? Ben, ben laughing. I know. I should have read that all the way through, Ben. I should have read that. She got April 1st, Dublin, Dublin, Georgia. All right. All right. All right. All right, Biggie. All right. We love you. We love you. 
We're going to try to make our part and be somewhere. Listen, I want to talk to you tonight for about 30 minutes. If you give me a good 30 minutes, I believe it's going to bless your heart. Thank you, Buster. I, I want to I talk to you tonight about can you hear God's voice? And, and, and I want you to go ahead real quick. Let's like and share. Let's like and share the broadcast. Let's take a minute. Grab your phones, like and share it, and I want to kind of see who's online tonight. I see quite a few of you online with me tonight. I saw Regina. I saw Paula. I saw the Robinsons. I saw the Griggs. I saw the Smiths. Thank you for being such strong supporters of the ministry. Thank you for being a part. I saw the visionary on there. I see I see you at the root. I see you, girl. I see you, Shannon. And, and Latoya Renee, I see you guys. I love you, and I appreciate you guys being a part of, and Mr. Anthony George is watching tonight. All right, bless the Lord. All right, Grace, how you doing, Grace? How you doing? I miss you and Ronnie, man. Give Ronnie my love, man. I would love to see you guys in the house real soon. We miss you guys so much, so, so, so much. All right, so. I'm going to read some verses tonight out of the book of 1 Samuel, and I'm going to read 10 verses. I'm not actually going to preach from these verses. I am going to try to pull out about three or four different things from the verses. All right, so let's go together tonight. Um, grab your Bibles or whatever device you have. Let's go to 1 Samuel, the third chapter, and let's begin to look at verse number 1 through verse number 10. Here we go. Samuel, 1 Samuel 3, verses 1 through 10. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. The ear of the, the, ear of the lamp of the, um, God went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I, for thou callest me. And he said, I call it, call not, lie down again. And he went and laid down. And the Lord called again, yet again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli, and he said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call, it, call you not, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he rose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli, and Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and laid down in his place, and the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel answered, speak, for thy servant heareth. Amen. That's, that, those are some great verses. We're going to talk tonight for a few minutes. Give me about 30 minutes. Can you hear God's voice? Man, I'm coming off the cuffs of what God really started to do in our local church on Sunday, as I begin to remind our local body of believers the importance of being a disciple of Christ. And I want to continue to help us to learn and how important it means for us in this season, this dispensation, what it means to be a disciple of Christ. Part of that journey of becoming this disciple or follower of Christ, part of that journey is learning how to hear when God is speaking to us, learning to hear God's voice, come on, is very critical in the life of a believer, especially when you consider that all of us were shouting on Sunday that we are believing God to manifest his presence in all of our lives. And so it's important that we learn how to hear God's voice because it is critical to us being able, watch me, to manifest the kingdom of God in our lives. Because here's an eternal truth that I want you to take with you tonight, and I want you to take it with you, take it with you from this time forward. God wants to guide us. He wants to show us the way. Watch me all the time. He wants to guide us and show us the way 
all the time. This is an eternal truth that you can take with you that God always wants to guide us and show us the way all the time, all the time. You know, if you begin to think about it, we make key decisions all the time, and those bad ones, and if we be honest, those bad ones are very damaging and they're very costly. Wouldn't it be great? Come on, let's think about it. Wouldn't it be great if we had a reliable expert who could guide us through all of the twists and turns of this life? Well, the Bible says that we do. The writers of the scriptures, the authors of the Bible tells us these remarkable ideas, names, and pictures of our God. He is the Redeemer. He is our Creator. He is our Father. He is our Judge. He is our Comforter. God is our guide. In the beginning, if you remember, we talked a few weeks ago about Abram um, getting ready to become the father of many nations. And in Genesis, you find where God says to Abraham, listen, leave your country, leave your people, leave your father's household to a land. Watch this to a land that I will show you. Hebrew later tells us how Abraham makes it into the hall of faith. He says he went not knowing. He followed the voice of God. God guided Abraham. Now, think about it, if you will. We get into the book of Exodus where the children are, the children of Israel are now traveling. It has just made it through across the Red Sea. And now they're getting ready to walk through the wilderness. And the Bible lends us this information that God led the children of Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night. This was a physical picture of a spiritual promise. This was a spiritual picture, a physical picture of a spiritual promise. What is that promise, Pastor? That God desires to guide his children all the time. He desires to show us the way all the time. And in the book of Proverbs, we know this. Proverbs 1, and the, this is a very powerful verse. We know this. This is a verse that everybody used for Sunday school. Trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Watch the verse. It says, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. Oh my God, the simplicity of it, but it is very true. What about the most, one of the most famous Psalms of all Psalms 23, where it says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want, watch this. He, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Are you listening to me? Watch this. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me beside still waters and he restores my soul. Man, aren't these powerful verses? These verses give us an indicator that God desires to lead his children, to guide his children. God wants us to realize and rest in that fact that he wants to guide us. Our God is a God. He doesn't leave his people out there on their own. You ain't out there just floating around somewhere, baby. You got God on your side. The Father is with you right now. He stands ready to guide you into the next dimension of your life, the next season, the next elevation, the next trial. He's going to walk with you everywhere. Listen, the Bible has declared that he will never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah. God desires to show us where we are. When you listen to the book of James, one of my favorite books, it says that whosoever among you that lacks wisdom, right? Is there anybody on the line tonight? Is there anybody on the line tonight have ever made a bad decision? Is there anybody on the line that have ever needed wisdom? Why? Okay, let's get real. Is there anybody watching me tonight that needs some wisdom right about now? Need God to give you some wisdom. Come on, I need somebody. Hashtag, I need some wisdom. I, I'm going to grab my phone because I need it too. Hashtag, I don't know how to do hashtag. <laughs> I need some wisdom. Come on, let's testify. I see you, Mary. Let's talk about it. I see you, Gigi. Let's talk about it. I see you, Caitlin. I see you. It, it, God, God has wisdom for you tonight. I, that's why I'm here. He has wisdom for you tonight. He, he desires to guide you. He desires to show you the way. If you're honest, you don't know what to do with where you're at. You don't know what to do with how to get out of what you're in. You need God to show you some wisdom. And the Bible says that when we need it, all 
all we have to do is call upon him and he will give it to us liberally, generously, without finding fault. My God, who am I preaching to tonight? I need some wisdom. Now, let me go back again and tell you, our God is a guiding God. He's a guiding God. He wants to guide us tonight. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. Listen to what I'm saying. We as a local church, let me put my glasses so I can see what y'all are saying. We as a local church, we are preparing our hearts to be the disciples of Christ. And because we're going to become disciples, we're going to honor the word of the Lord. And because we're going to honor the word of the Lord, we are going to have a manifestation of the spirit of God in our lives this year. Can somebody say amen? I, I, I need you to say amen for your house for your family, for your dream, for your business, God is going to guide you into your manifestation. Hallelujah. I just felt that for somebody. He's going to guide you into your manifestation. You are going to experience the hand of God this year. He's going to guide us. Hallelujah. 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 Because he's a guiding God. He wants to guide us. He wants to show us the way. He wants us to know which way we are go, ought to go, right? But listen, I need to I need you to break down and hear this with me. I, I see, I see, I see. Amen, 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 I, amen. Watch this. But of all the facets of the greatness of God that I talked about, him being redeemer, and creator, and father, the guidance of God can be one of the most confusing to people. How, brothers and sisters, do we actually experience this? How do we develop this? Now, come on, I need you to lean in and listen to this because this, this really was really ministering to me today. Because I've been a part of the Church of Jesus for a long time, man. More than half my life, I've been a part of, the, of a Christian community, if you will. And I've come to realize this, and I want you to hear me real good. Some people use the language of divine guidance way too easy. Way too easily, right? They're always talking about the Lord told me this. God spoke to me about going here. God put this burden on my heart. God showed me that. And we all know them. We all know that they might even be you. Always talking about the Lord said this and God showed me this and God did this. And the thing that always seemed to bother me over the years when I consistently hear people discuss and have this kind of verbiage come out of their mouth consistently, I always look for the fruit that I don't see in their life. What are you saying, Pastor? They always talk about the Lord showed them this and did this for them, but they don't have any fruit to match what God is saying. And so I, I don't want our church to be caught up in that kind of conversation where people are quickly talking about what the Lord said, but you won't have no fruit to match what he's saying. So eventually, come on, watch me. Eventually, God has to manifest what he's saying to you. So if God is telling you to do something, eventually we ought to be able to pluck from that tree of what he said to you. And there ought to be some fruit behind what God has been saying to you. And you remember I told you that most of the time, overly spiritual people never manifest anything because they always say, but the Lord said, the Lord said, but it takes work to manifest. It takes you putting some effort in to manifest. You need to see some fruit behind that, right? So you got these people who, you, who use the language of divine guidance way too easily, way too easily. And then there are other people. They like me, they like me, these people like me who love God deeply, who follows God, who learns about God. And honestly, watch this. I've never had one of those over earth shattering things where people are talking about <laughs> what God is doing, right? And so many times when you're, when you're that kind of person, because let me help you. Sometimes when you're around people like that and they come into a church setting, you come to a church setting, you all you hear is people on what the Lord said, the Lord did, the Lord talking to them, the Lord talking to them. Lord, it can be intimidating to people who've never heard God speak. And maybe they're wondering, is there some secret to it? Am I doing something wrong? Am I off base? Or better yet, some people might leave and say, maybe these people just making up some stuff. Just making up. I'm going to put that down there. Hold a minute. Stop making up stuff. Y'all see me, right?
Stop talking about the Lord said this and the Lord said that and there's no fruit behind it. You are making people who come, who are sincerely seeking the Father feel like something's wrong with them. So here's what I need us to know. Here's what I need us to know. Come on, lean in, church. I got All I got is 15 more minutes. Lean in. That if you're not used to it, listening and hearing for God's leading can seem overwhelming can seem overwhelming, right? If you're not used to hearing God's voice, this is very critical as we begin to develop what it means to be a disciple for Christ. If you're not used to hearing God or learning God's voice, it can seem overwhelming. And so tonight I want to show us a few things, three different things in t that I want to give you that can help us begin to prepare our hearts to listen. But not only listen to God, I want us to learn to listen with the intent on obeying, and that word is called hearken. We ought to hearken unto the voice of the Lord. That is listening with the intent on obeying. That is a major difference. That is a major difference. So I want to give us some simple guidelines that I believe will help us become more receptive. Watch me to God's whisper. Come on, somebody say whisper. God's whisper. Come on, whisper. I want you to hear that. I want you to get that in your spirit. God's whisper. I want you to hear, hear that God's whisper. My God, I want you to understand. I, there are some verses that I did not give to them in, in the book of um, 1 King um, when the prophet Elijah, he, he wants to quit his assignment, walk away, and God begins to correct him, right? He begins to tell him, tell him what the, what's the right way. In, in, in 1 Kings 19 and, and 11, it says, and God... And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount. This is before the Lord, right? And behold, the Lord passed by. Just listen to me. The Lord passed by and a great strong wind rent the mountain in half, right? And broke it in pieces in the rocks before the Lord. Watch this. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in an earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, come on, listen to me, a still small voice and that's where elijah found the lord i need you to really understand metaphorically what's happening here there's a lot of loud stuff going on all around us all the time but god who stands ready to lead us is in that still small whisper of a voice my god my God, who am I preaching to tonight? God's whisper, right? So what can we learn tonight, builders of the faith and friends and family on Facebook? What can we learn tonight from what happened in our text that we read in Samuel verses 1 through 10, 3, 1 through 10? I, I want to give us three things real quick. I want to give us three things real quick, and then I'm going to transition right on up out of here. here here's the first one. Don't get mad at me. Just kind of let the Lord speak to you, right? You can worship but not know God. That's the first one. You can worship but not know God, at least not intimately, right? So listen to 1 Samuel 3, 7. Now Samuel did not, watch this, did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Oh, you catch me? He didn't know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord revealed unto him. Samuel had been worshiping God. He had been serving in ministry. He had been serving the pastor Eli. He was assisting in the priestly duties, yet he did not know the Lord in the voice of God. He did not know. Can I tell you right now? I really need us to understand this because there have been so many people who have missed what God's trying to say simply because they're doing for God without knowing God. And you have to realize how important it is for you to know the voice of God. And here is where we have failed in equipping people to become the disciples that they're called. You remember on Sunday I said this is one of the greatest failures of the church is that we have failed to equip people to become disciples after God, right? We've, we've not taught them. Somebody comes walking out, give their heart to the Father, 
and we're all excited. They come in and they shouting and running and stuff. And then the next thing we do is we want to put them to work, right? We want to put them right in work. Come on, we need you serving in this ministry. You can serve in this ministry. We find out that they have a skill set over there. You can serve in this ministry. But here is the challenge with that. We have to realize it takes time for us to undo all of the sinful behavior that we've learned all, all of our years. And so we have to learn how to become disciples of Christ, right? And so the church that does not, and, my, and builders of the faith, hear me, this is me repenting. This is why I'm teaching the way that I'm teaching, because we need to have strong discipleship in the local body of believers. We need believers who understand their role, what God has called them to do, who they are in God, and what God requires of them. We have to teach them that, that when you watch this, when God has your heart, you will respond to his voice. We have to teach this. When God has your heart, you'll respond to his voice. You won't dismiss it. You won't act like he ain't talking to you. You won't act like God ain't speaking to you when you know he's talking to you. And here's one of the major, here's one of the main indicators that you can know if you know, uh, if you, uh, here's one of the main indicators that will let you know that you are becoming a disciple of Christ. It is your ability to respond to his voice. To respond to his voice. Not just hear his voice, but respond. Do what he says. Follow his guiding. Follow what he's saying. Do what he's telling you. This is one of the main indicators that you are becoming a disciple of Christ. Here is my second point tonight, right? You can hear God speaking, but not recognize that is God. So we know the verse in 1 Samuel 3 and 4, the Lord calls Samuel and said, here am I. But what did he do? He runs the, he runs the ear line. He said, here am I, for you call of me. Samuel did not recognize the voice of God. And we may not recognize God's voice the first time we hear it. Now, I'm going to teach you something that I learned over the years, right? This is my testimony of being a believer for many years. And I want you to recognize this. Because most of the time people begin to think they're hearing God. They begin to identify it with your conscience or your own thoughts. And I've learned that there are three different voices that are always speaking to me. In my heart, there is speaking in my heart or my head or however you want to see it, my soul. There are always three different voices, right? There's the devil. Then there is my flesh. And then there is God. And check this out. They all sound like me. When you sit and begin to rationalize how God is talking to you, right? So these voices are always talking. The devil is talking and it sounds like you because it's in your head and it's telling you to do stuff, temptation, showing you stuff that you know is wicked and does not, God doesn't want you to do. Then there is your flesh. Your flesh caters to your selfish side of you. And it wants you to do stuff that only pleases you. Does not want, I don't feel like doing it. I, I'm not doing that. I, that's your flesh side. That's that flesh, right? But you'll know if it's God because it's God if it's stretching you. If it's challenging you, if it aligns with scripture, you know God is talking then. God is saying, forgive them your flesh. Is, oh, no, 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 I'm not forgiving. God is saying, give your flesh. Be like, oh, no, I got other stuff to do. God is saying, go and support your flesh. Be like, man, I don't feel like doing all that extra stuff. So you have to learn how to hear God and recognize the voices that are going off in your head. It's the devil. It's the flesh. It's God. And they all sound like you. And so this people, you got to learn how to distinguish when your flesh is trying to lead you and when the devil is trying to tempt you. I'm preaching better than you're looking at me. And when God is trying to instruct you, if we're saying that we are going to manifest the kingdom of God in this year, we must learn how to recognize the voice of God. And if we're honest, most of the stuff that God asks us to do or require of us, and I hope I can get some amens on it, we don't want to do it. I'm going to say amen for myself. We do not want to do it. 
We don't want to respond to it. We know, man, please, I could get more sleep. I could be doing something else. I got other stuff going on. But God's trying to guide you. He's trying to show you. Remember, he wants to lead you into a manifestation. And if you're going to be a disciple in this season, you got to understand the value of sacrifice. You got to understand that God will challenge you and stretch you and cause you to go places you've never gone before. And you got to recognize when God is speaking to you and you got to know when your flesh is talking to you and you got to know when the devil is messing with your thought pattern. You got to learn the difference. You got to learn the difference. I know I ain't the only one out there and they all sound like you. They all sound like you. They sound just like you. Right now, you probably hear the devil telling you, but man, turn that off. That's the devil. You probably hear your flesh say, I wish he hurry up. That's the devil. And then you hear God say, you need to lean in and listen because I've been trying to talk to you over and over again, but you ain't listening to me because you're so busy listening to your flesh. You're so busy catering to what the devil is saying that you're missing what I'm trying to lead you into. Hallelujah. Who am I preaching to tonight? God is trying to guide us into our manifestation, but we've got to be able to recognize his voice and we got to know when to shut the devil now and we got to know when to crucify this flesh and we got to be able to hear God when God is trying to talk to you. It sounds just like me. Lean in. Hear God. I see you one. Here, here's my third one. Here's my third one. You ready? Sometimes a mentor can help us learn to recognize and respond to God's voice. All right. Sometime a mentor can help us with that, right? And we see in 1 Samuel 3 and 8, the Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he rose and he went to Eli, and he said, Here am I. You called me, and Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. He said, Listen, go back, lay down, and if it happens again, this is what you need to do, right? Eli recognized what was happening, and he gave instructions to Samuel on what to say if it happens again. And this is such, so critical, such a critical part of us becoming a disciple of Christ. Because we need someone to teach us. Why? Why do we need people to teach us, Pastor? Because we're born in sin. We're not born recognizing God. You don't get saved on Sunday and then just think all of a sudden you know God's voice. You have to be taught, you have to be trained on how to recognize the voice of God. And this is why God assigns us pastors who can help, help us develop and learn and grow in the ways of God. And this includes helping us even like tonight. I guarantee you what I just said in number two about recognizing between the flesh, your, the devil and God is going to help some of you to be able to distinguish when God is speaking to you because that's part of the role of the pastor is to help us to learn how to recognize God's voice when God is speaking, right? Yet there are so many people who feel like they're beyond the pastor. I don't need a pastor, but that's deception. That's the enemy. That's the devil trying to tell us that we don't need, need God. But let me be clear. You will always need someone to help you. Watch me help guide you, hallelujah, into each new season of your life. Each new season that God has for you. Man, I'm trying to help builders of the faith to understand that God is getting ready to give us an open season. And we need somebody to help guide us into this new season. For each new season of your life, please hear me. We're going to need more and more guidance. We're going to need God to guide us over and over. We're going to need more guidance. And please hear me tonight. For each new season, my Lord said, hey, God will give your pastor a fresh anointing to help guide you into your next dimension. You got to hear me tonight. This is not about us being out here by ourselves. This is not about us trying to handle life by ourselves. This is what God is saying. I'm getting ready to elevate builders of the faith. I'm going to walk them into a new and fresh and powerful season. We are declaring that everybody is going to manifest. We're declaring every our families, our children, our business, our dreams, all of that. We're going to manifest. It's going to happen because God is going to guide us. He's going to show us where to go. He's going to 
to show us how to build it. He's going to show us how to do it. He's going to tell us what to do. He's going to tell us which way to go. He's going to tell you go left. He's going to tell you go right. He's going to give you a pastor that's going to anoint him with fresh anointing. That's going to lead you and encourage you to recognize when God is speaking to you, to recognize when God is talking to you. We're going to learn in this season, my God, who am I preaching to? We're going to learn in this season how to cast down our flesh, how to resist the devil, and how to embrace what God has for us. Amen. Man, I feel God. Somebody shout glory online. Glory, glory, glory. I feel it. Manifestation. Yeah. I see you, Christina. Manifestation. I hear you, Gigi. I hear you. It's time, y'all. Come on. Somebody say, I'm about to walk into mine. I'm about to step into what God has for me, and he's going to guide me in this upcoming season of my life, every step of the way. So listen, I, I love you. I saw Pops come along. Hey, Apostle Hooker, God bless you. I love you so much. Come on, man. I love him. I love Pops. I love Pops. So listen, I got to get out of here, y'all. I see you, Latoya. I see you, Vicky. I see you, Rick. I see you, Ben. I see you. It's, it's, come on, man. Y'all got to grab this by the spirit tonight. It is important that if we're going to become disciples of Christ, that we learn the voice of God and how to recognize God's voice. It is important that we do that. So here we go. Let me try to get out of here. If, all right, Johnny, I see you. Yes, Johnny, I see you, Eric. I see, Frank, bless you, bless you. Eric, I see you. Watch this. If, if, if I was to leave us with something tonight, if I was going to leave us with something, Come on, lean in here. I'm about to close out of here. If I was going to leave us with anything, it will, uh, to help us learn to recognize God's voice, it would be that we must come before him, watch me, as humble and obedient servants. If you really want to hear God humble your life in this season and become an obedient servant, don't you forget that it's really easy to hear without listening, right? Remember I told you earlier, we must learn how to hearken unto the Lord. That is listening with the intent on obeying, right? So when you got, when you have the devil talking to you, you got your flesh talking to you, then you have the father talking to you, right? You got to learn how to hearken unto what God is saying. Some of you right now, God's been talking to you, but he's been challenging you to get something right, to do something a certain way, come on, man, to walk a certain path, to live a certain way, and it's been challenging to you, and you've been dismissing it. Come on, I hear him, God. You've been dismissing it. But God said this is going to be key to you manifesting in this upcoming season. Can you hearken and listen with the intent on obeying? Our goal as believers and disciples of Christ must be that we we want to know God for ourselves, not just some experience, some novelty, or be around people that sound, you know, that's always talking about hearing God's voice. Because hearing his voice is not a gimmick. It's not some spiritual token that you want to sit around and brag. The Lord said this to me. The Lord said this to me. God said, do this. God's that's that's that that's that's not it. Hearing God's voice is about developing this conversational relationship with your father who desires to guide you into your manifestation. Did you hear me? It's not about you bragging on what the Lord said. I hear God telling you to do this. No, it's, it's, it's about you developing a conversational relationship with your father who desires to guide you into your manifestation. And when we study the ministry and life of Jesus, I want you to hear this. Uh, we see that Jesus spending time with God, right? When he does this, because you study his ministry, he, he oftentimes Jesus would withdraw and be alone because spending time with God enabled Jesus to see and hear what the Father was doing so he could do it also. Did you catch that? You see, what God wants to manifest in our lives is meant to touch other people's lives. And so we got to spend time with him, see and hear what he's saying so we can do the same thing. Oh, my Lord. It's about maintaining our relationship with the Father, church. It's about us learning what can we grow, 
how can we grow in this season? Will you do me a favor? Will you do me a favor? Can you right now, wherever you're at, because I, I got a few people in the studio, they can encourage me. Can you just put your hands on your ears and just for that moment, ask the Lord to open up your ears so that you can hear him. He wants to guide you into your manifestation. He wants his voice to be king. Remember, it's a whisper. Remember, it's a whisper. You got to be able to hear his voice over all of the noise that's all around your life. Children, relationship, jobs, financial situations. Come on. Those are the storms and trials and circumstances. And you have to be able to hear God, my God, over all of that because he's whispering in your ear. Hallelujah. Which direction you need to go. This is what you need to do tomorrow. Hallelujah. Some of you are going to lay down tonight. And he's going to tell you what to do for tomorrow. You need this. You need this. You need to cast down what the devil is saying. Resist what your flesh is telling you and lean in and hear what God is saying. I want us to maintain our relationship with God. Buster, help me out. I'm getting up out of here. Let me leave you with this verse. And this is for builders of the faith and those who would dare to partner and join in with us. I want you to develop a heart to draw closer to God in this season of your life. I, I want to be the one to tell you your manifestation is on its way. And it is directly tied to your willingness to surrender to the word and become that disciple that recognizes the voice of God. You got to be able to hear God. Hosea, the prophet, gives us a powerful verse that I want you to hear tonight. Hosea 6 and 3 from the New Living. Oh, that we might know the Lord. Come on, this is my favorite part. Let us press on to know him. He will respond to us as surely as the arrival of dawn or the coming of the rains in early springs. Can I tell you, your manifestation is on its way and God desires to guide you right into it. Come on, Abram, get up from your family. Get up from everything that's familiar and let me show you where your real manifestation is. Come on, will you help me today? Will you lay a hand on your heart? Here we go. Father, do a work in our hearts tonight because if you have our heart, we can hear your voice. God, strengthen our hearts for you. Let us train our ears to hear the whisper of your voice, hallelujah, over the noise of life. You desire to guide us. It is your heart to show us which way to go. May we acknowledge you in all our ways so that you can direct our path. God, today somebody watching me right now needs to be led by steel waters. Go ahead and lead them. Show them where their peace is at, God. Father, breathe over this church. We desire that all of us manifest, that we become disciples after your heart. Hallelujah. And so now, God, do a work in our heart so that we can hear your voice. It is in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Listen, let's go ahead and honor the Lord tonight in our giving. There are four ways you know how to do this that we can give. Let's give tonight. Don't miss it. Come on. Don't listen to your flesh. Don't listen to the devil. Hear God. There are four ways you can give tonight. You can give on Cash App, dollar sign, B-O-T-F-C-C. You can download the Giveify app on your Android or iPhone and look for Builders of the Faith. You'll see my face. Follow the prompting. You can go to our website at buildersofthefaith.com or you can mail in your contribution to 5900 Ricker Road, Jacksonville, Florida, 32244. Listen, church, I, I love you to life. My wife and I are consistently praying for your manifestation. We're praying that God guide you right into the very thing that you're looking for. But I want you to learn to hear his voice. Come on. You got to recognize the devil talking, your flesh talking, 
and God's trying to talk to you. And you got to remember, God is talking to you in a whisper. And there's a lot of noise going on. So every now and then you got to steal your life so that you can hear that whisper of God. I believe God's going to guide you into greater things in this upcoming year. And I pray that you do. Remember, Thursday night, I'm hanging out with the worship team for a few minutes. Remember to catch me Friday at noon for Faith Field Friday. And man, please remember the Not Ministry, Friday night, 7 p.m., 5900 Ricker Road. Child care is provided. Come on, we're going to have a great time. We're going to believe the Lord is going to bless. And just remember, we're here together. We want to see everybody manifest. We want to see God work in everybody's life. We love everybody here. We are, we are rooting for everybody to succeed. This is a great church to be a part of. And if you're not connected to a local church, this is a great church to be a part of. I believe your life would change for the better. Let's give God, let's give to the Father tonight. I love you. I'll see you on Friday at Faith Field Friday. God bless you. We love you real soon. See you soon.